Hello and welcome back to this GCSE Chemistry Revision Series brought to you by RevisedChemistry.uk. In today's video we're going to be learning about states of matter, separation techniques, chromatography and potable water. Solids, liquids and gases can be represented by drawing particle diagrams. You can see on the screen the particle diagram that we would draw for a solid, a liquid and a gas. In a solid, particles are very close and those particles are arranged in a regular pattern. The particles vibrate around a fixed position and those particles have got a very low energy. In a liquid, the particles are also close but they're not as close as they are in a solid. The particles are now randomly arranged and they're free to move around each other. The particles have more energy than solids, however gases have got the most amount of energy. In a gas, particles are very far apart and the particles are randomly arranged. Notice how for a solid, all of the particles are touching and for a liquid, most of them are still touching but there are a few gaps within the structure. Gases, we do not draw any of these particles touching each other. The most common mistake in exams is for students to draw a gas but with the particles very close together rather than a liquid diagram. A pure substance is either a single element or compound that is not mixed with any other substance. A mixture contains two or more elements and or compounds that are not chemically connected together and can be easily separated using physical processes. We're going to look at those processes a little bit later on in this video. Pure substances will melt and boil at specific temperatures, whilst an unpure substance or a mixture will melt and boil over a range of temperatures. We can see this in the two graphs on the screen now. If a substance is impure, it will also generally have a lower melting and boiling point. Filtration is a separation technique that separates an insoluble solid from a liquid. A mixture of a liquid and solid is passed through filter paper into a flask below. The solid stays on the filter paper and we call this the residue, whereas the liquid passes through the filter paper into the container below and we call this the filtrate. Crystallization or evaporation is a separation technique that separates a soluble solid from a liquid. A solution of liquid and dissolved solid is heated, causing the solvent to evaporate and leaving the solid crystals behind. Simple distillation is a separation technique that separates solvent from a solution. This method works because the solvent has a much lower boiling point than the dissolved solute. Heating the solution allows the solvent to evaporate and then it passes through a condenser where it is cooled and condensed into a separate container. The solute does not evaporate and so it stays behind in the original container. Fractional distillation is similar to the method of simple distillation, but this time we're trying to separate multiple liquids. They can be separated using the concept that they all have different boiling points. Chromatography is a slightly different separation technique. All of the previous techniques that we've looked at allow you to collect a substance at the end to do further testing or to do further reactions with. However, chromatography is just a technique that shows us whether something contains either a pure substance or a mixture. You can't then take those chemicals and do something with them. We would have to separate them through one of the previous techniques to do that. On the screen are two diagrams. The first image shows you what the chromatography experiment looks like before it's run and the second one shows you what it looks like after it's been run. Paper chromatography consists of two stages. The first stage is the stationary phase, and this is a phase that doesn't move, so the paper. But the crucial part of this experiment is the mobile phase, the phase that does move, and it's the solvent, as the solvent moves up through the paper. Separation by chromatography can be used to distinguish between a pure substance, which would only produce one spot, and a mixture which produces multiple spots. First, on the left, we can see we use purple ink, and on the right, in our finished experiment, we can see that it's split into a red spot and a blue spot. That means the purple ink was a mixture. We can see that both the red ink and the blue ink 
split only into one spot, their own colour, making them a pure substance. It's important when we set up this experiment that we draw a baseline in pencil, otherwise if we drew it in pen it would also dissolve in our solvent and it would ruin our experiment. You need to be able to calculate an RF value of any spot on a chromatogram. The way that we calculate an RF value is by taking the distance that a spot has moved and dividing it by the distance that the solvent moved in our experiment. This number will always be less than 1 because it's a ratio between how far something has moved versus how far the solvent has moved. Why not have a go at calculating the RF values for the spots on screen now? Pause this video to wait for the answer. As far as we know, all life requires water. The water that we need, however, needs to be of a specific standard. We don't need to drink pure water, despite what many people may believe. The water that we need to be able to drink needs to contain things dissolved in it, for lots of various processes in our body. We call water that we need to be able to drink, and is safe to drink, potable water. In the United Kingdom, rainwater provides us with a lot of water, allowing us to collect it either from the ground, from rivers, or from lakes. The first step to then take this water and make it potable is sedimentation, where the solids will sink to the bottom of a container and we remove them. The second step is filtration, where fine particles like sand are removed. The final step is technically a sterilization step, but we call this chlorination. And microbes, like bacteria, are killed in this step using chlorine. A lot of countries around the world don't have access to what we call fresh water. That's water from lakes and rivers. And so they have to collect their water from the sea around them. The sea contains a lot of salt and is not immediately able to be used to make potable water. The first thing that we have to do is something called desalination. And that involves one of our previous techniques at looking at how we can remove dissolved substances. Desalination is effectively a distillation step where we evaporate off the water and we allow the water to condense in a different container, leaving behind the vast quantities of salt in the previous container. When we do research in the lab, or when we do analysis of various different chemicals, we can't use potable water because potable water, as previously stated, contains lots of dissolved substances. We have to use pure water in the lab, and we often call that deionized or distilled water because it has been distilled to remove all of the dissolved substances. Thanks for watching this video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more. And I'll see you next time in our next video on this GCSE Chemistry Revision course. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.